fellow, my sister, my youngest sister, she uh, got into the nursing field and that got boring, so then she got into the travel nursing, doing contracts for different places, and then I guess that's kind of boring, so she went back to school, got her master's degree, and she turned around and uh, went back to school to be a doctor, and so she just climbing the ladder. Hello YouTube, Ghost Rider on this end from the remote QTH. I'm out camping this weekend. Today we'll be looking at a portable go box using the Bay of Fing BTEC UV25X2 dual band radio. Stand by for more. All right, let's talk about the basic components of the go box here. First of all, the box itself is a Plano uh, basically about the size of an ammo can, except it's plastic, relatively cheap. It's about uh, maybe a foot long by six or eight inches wide by about six or eight inches tall. can be found at any sporting goods store of your choice. And the outside has been fitted with a couple of uh, items here. We got a pretty cheap voltmeter I picked up at a ham fest. And then over here on this side, I've got a USB charging port. Again, picked that up at a, at a ham fest pretty, pretty cheaply. I just drilled through the side of the plastic container on that and uh, wired those up. On the inside, we have uh, in the back here or in the bottom, we got a BioNO 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And it does a great job of keeping a fairly constant voltage for a long period of time. Um, if you want to check out those online, that one's from BioNO. And uh, we'll be talking about that one more later. I've got a small wiring harness here from the battery. Uh, one side of that is going to the, the meter and the, uh, the charging USB charging port. And I've got another side of it going to... Uh, output to the radio and um, get a small watt meter in line here voltmeter watt meter those can be found pretty much anywhere probably about 15 20 bucks for that guy and then uh, last but not least we have the Bay of Fing tech or B tech UV 25 X2 mini mobile radio so let's get into each of these components individually now the BioNO battery came in its own packaging, came with this kind of a, a foam enclosure. And it just so happened that that enclosure that it came in fits perfectly in this Plano uh, box. So I thought, what the heck, the battery doesn't really get hot or anything. This would protect it from shock. So I just left it uh, nestled down in that styrofoam container or foam container. It's compressible, it's not really styrofoam, you know, it's uh. Uh, quite compressible it's not rigid so that that really works good now the the actual end terminals of the battery it comes with anderson power poles uh, to connect to your wiring harness and it's got this little charging port here that connects directly to the wall charger the great thing about these lithium iron phosphate batteries is that they represent a quantum leap in battery technology and i would suggest uh you watch OH8STN, that's Julian, over there on Survival Tech Nord, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November. He's got a ton of good information on lithium iron phosphate batteries and actually how to build your own if you would like to do that. Uh, this battery, again, is from BioNO. Uh, the specific model number is the BLF, that's Bravo Lima, Lima Foxtrot-1220 Alpha. BLF 1220A, it's a 20 amp hour. It fits very nicely within the uh, the go box itself and the weight is only 5.4 pounds. Now this is three more amp hours than a um, AGM type battery that I was using before, which you would find on something like a lawnmower or maybe a, a motorcycle. And that battery weighs literally about 25 pounds. Um, compared to 5.4 pounds with, with this. Uh, so it's a great weight savings as well. Uh, not to mention that they hold the voltage over many, many 
uses until they finally run out. So they also do not have a memory. So as soon as you're done operating, whether it's a short amount of time or a decent amount of time, just plug it in afterwards or overnight. Um, it won't get a memory. It won't um, cause the battery to have less capacity. So uh, that's it for the bio NO battery. Okay, uh, next major component is the, the radio itself. I'll pick this UV25X2 made by Bayafang Tech or BTEC as it says on the manual. I picked it up for about uh, a little less than a hundred bucks at a, a store that just happened to have some uh, items on sale there. I think they had actually picked them up uh, maybe from, from a wholesaler or something. I looked online, this usually lists for about $115 or something. I think I got it for about 90. Um, again, it's the, the model is the UV25X2. Now, this radio is great for a go kit for several different reasons. It's not expensive. It is dual band. And you can see it's got four frequencies on the front. It's what they call quad watch. So those four frequencies that are, I have programmed in as memories there, it basically listens for a signal on each of those at one time. And when it hears a signal, it automatically, the little arrow to the left, goes to that frequency and it will stay there for uh, an amount of time that you determine. So if you hear somebody key up, you can go back and not have to fiddle with the microphone and go back to them. You can obviously turn that off too if you'd like. Um, this is again, two meter and 70 centimeter or 440 radio. It's called a mini mobile. Um, it's a very compact size. You probably can't tell scale very well with the video, but it fits down. I, when I pack the go box, it fits down in this little cavity here, um, within the go box, along with the, the, the battery charger will fit down in there as well. And all I do to mount it is I bought a couple of these clamps at the hardware store and I just clamp that to the outside of the go box. And then I put the mobile mounting bracket on the radio and just slip that over the, the uh, ends of two of the handles of the clamp. And it works really good. It's, it gives you, uh, sticks out from the radio. You can see the screen and gets it kind of up and out of the way and gets the speaker up where you can, you can hear it. Um, Again, I've uh, got a DTMF mic lighted that comes with it. And um, another great feature about the radio is it's got the, it's got FM band on it. So if you've got local FM stations, you know, you can tune into that um, or not. But for a go kit radio, dual band, again, quad watch with FM receive for under a hundred bucks. Okay. It's a great little radio. I mean, it's, uh, the programming ease of this radio is not as bad as a Bay of Fang handheld. If I was to rate, let's just say a Yesu radio, which I happen to have my FT 2DR here, the Yesu radios ease of programming, I would say with 10 being the easiest, this guy here is probably about an eight or a nine. To me, it's very simple. I know the uh, the Yesu radio protocols to, to program it and they're pretty much common across their rigs. So if that one's a nine, I would say this guy here is probably about a six. Um, as long as you just read the manual, it's fairly straightforward. It's not that hard to understand. It's just a few more steps to, to program in you know frequencies or a repeater. Definitely, though, not as hard as a handheld Bay of Thing. And this one, you, I wouldn't think that you would really need um, something like Chirp software unless you had a whole lot of frequencies you're wanting to load in, you know, to keep from having to do it all from the microphone. Let's see, a couple of other st stats on this is the, uh, the listed transmit output power for 2 meters, 25 watts. And on uh, 440, it's 20 watts. And it's a little, probably a little less than that in actuality, but that's what they list it as. Um, it's got two power ranges, so those were high power. The low power range is 10, 10 watts out on 2 meter and 7 watts out on 440. So again, great little package to, um, to put in the go kit. Compact, 
The size of this guy is about four and a half inches by four and a half inches by inch and three quarter deep, not counting the bracket. So it takes up very little space. Um, it, it also has a cooling fan in it. Um, so I can get in here, maybe you can see that. It may be a little difficult to see, but you can see right there, it's got a cooling fan on the back of it, which is another uh, cool feature to have in a mini mobile. Uh, keep that thing nice and cool. So let's talk about the portable mass setup. The way we're gonna assemble this is we're gonna take 10 sections of aluminum military surplus mast. They're each 44 inches long. We're gonna take the base section, which is a male on the top, and we're gonna take this tripod connector. And uh, here's where you can get the mast system. Go verticalusa.com. If you wanna look back in my previous videos from about three years ago, you'll see uh, one of these I put up as a pin base, not a tripod at my house. Um, been a while, but uh, this is essentially the same system. I carry it in the bed of my truck pretty much at all times. So let's talk about how we will set this up. First thing we're gonna do, gonna find a good location. Here I'm at the camper at the uh, remote QTH. And we're gonna set up, like I said, 10 sections total with the tripod adapter. Find us a good location. I'm in a pine wood, so there's not a whole lot of uh, options where I'm not out under from under the limbs, but that's okay for two meter and 440. We're gonna locate the base and just set it on the ground. And then we're gonna take one of the mass sections and some of the mass sections will have stiffener rings on the bottom of them and some will not. And I'll show you what that means later. But we're just gonna take this and uh, put it right there. It'll stand up by itself. And the next thing we're gonna do is gonna take the tripod adapter. We're gonna put two mass sections in each side receiver with the male side up uh, to make our three legs. So I've got those pretty much laid out on the ground in pairs. Again, we're gonna use the ones with the reinforced ends here. So let's do that and come right back. Okay, so now what we've done is we've installed two sections for each leg. So that's six total mass sections in the tripod adapter. That's gonna put the tripod adapter at about five and a half feet above the ground, which is nice and stable. It probably takes about a 10 foot by 10 foot area for the tripod base to set it up. Um, obviously you can put the legs between other objects or obstructions as you need to. All right, so what we wanna do is make sure that this base in this first section of mast is pretty much lined up um, under the adapter, okay? Now, the important thing is we're gonna take the mast sections that you can order without the stiffener ring on the ends, and we're gonna use those to, uh, to make the antenna mast. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, just start putting these up through the middle here, we're gonna feed them up and connect them. And then we're going to set it, basically set it down on top of the lower section. But the first one I'm going to uh, use is I'm gonna grab the one that the antenna's mounted to. I'm gonna hold it on top. And then I'm gonna put these sections up through the base and into the bottom of this mass section here. Let's talk about the antenna while we're here. This is an elk. That's Echo Lima Kilo, five element log periodic antenna. If you look at their website or on eham.com, this is a fantastic two meter and 440 log periodic dipole array antenna. It comes with a nice little double boom section as most log periodics have with the elements alternating between each one. Each of these elements is essentially a aluminum arrow shaft that screws into the, the boom. And the nice connector right there. And a log periodic is actually fed from the front. So this is the front of the antenna. And you wanna keep your coax on a log periodic 90 degrees to the antenna, not just let it droop because it'll interfere with your signal. 
So I just, uh, on the PVC assembly that comes with the, with the elk, I just went ahead and got a 45 elbow and a longer piece of three quarter PVC. I think it's a three quarter or half. So we're gonna grab this guy, hold it up over the top of the adapter and push the mass up through the bottom. And finally, we're gonna seat it on top of the, of the uh, lower section of mass that's in the base. So we'll come right back and show you what that looks like set up. Okay, so we got it set up. And actually we're using 11 sections. Um, I wasn't counting the section at the top. They actually have a piece of PVC pipe clamped to with two hose clamps. But um, if you can see it there among the tree limbs, there's the five element log periodic. Got the coax out to the side on the piece of PVC. I've got it secured to the top of the mast just for strain relief. And there you have it. So got the coax running inside the camper. So let's get inside and check out the radio system. No, it's not good up here. I usually monitor all the repeaters. I've got like, I don't know, six, seven repeaters on right now. KB9ELS, KM4RT. Okay. Well, appreciate you coming back to me. I'm just, uh, I pushed my antenna up about another mass section high. So it's probably up around 20 feet now. Um, and uh, just checking out, programming a few frequencies in and uh, checking out the portable radio. KB9ELS, KM4RT. Alright, 73, KB9ELS, KM4RT, I'll be standing by listening. There you go. Uh, works good. Highly recommend it. It all fits together nicely. It's pretty lightweight. And uh, maybe you can get some use out of this and uh, help you out with your MCOM kit. Until next time, this is Ghost Rider from the Remote QTH. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. 73.